Hi, everybody. Elaine here, the Animal Reiki Lady. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, wherever you happen to be in this whole wide world. Uh, today, we have a reading for Loki, uh, a reading for Loki and also a message from all of the animals um, that I'll share after our little reading with Loki. Uh, Loki, I, th I, I'm, I know that I, I'm pretty sure I'm not pronouncing that right. It might be just Loke, L-O-K-E, Loke, and but that he was still Lo Loki, little Loki. Um, little Loki and little honey. I got that too, little honey. Uh, so for those of you who may be watching this video for the very first time, my name is Elaine. I'm an animal Reiki master and I help people make connections with animals through using the system of Reiki. But for this channel, what I try to do with the help of all of the animals who have crossed to the other side of life is help people heal after the loss of an animal companion. And so I love to do these beautiful messages and I thank you all for letting me share these messages with your animal companions. All right, so let's talk about Loke or Loki. Um, Loke is a little dog, uh, a Yorkshire Terrier, if I'm not mistaken. Um, cute, little, adorable thing, most precious little face that you can imagine. And I like to give messages that can be, I ask for some kind of evidence. So I always ask for a little bit of evidence so that the human companion knows that we're really making this connection. And then of course, there's always a message for everybody else. So what did little Loki have to say? Um, number one, he actually thinks he's a lion. Like I, 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 he sees himself as a much bigger dog than he actually is. Um, does not see himself as a, as a small dog. Um, he gives you signs all the time, all the time. I got this. He is sending signs. And in particular, I got footprints, like wet footprints, as if he's run through some wet grass or through a puddle and then his little feet have made prints. Um, but that was the one thing that came through was footprints. Um, he has an amazing bark. So I I don't not that it's necessarily loud, but it's a it's a it's a fun little bark. He's got an amazing bark. Uh, loved playing with feathers. He had a good appetite. Was there someone in your life or his, perhaps a friend? Uh, the name Toby is coming up again and again. Um, so we'll, we'll see what that means. I don't know if, if Toby is, is somebody. Uh, I got a sense that, that he has been around the block more than once. I got a sense that Loke has reincarnated like and is ancient, is an ancient soul, as if he has been around since like the time of the Egyptians. Uh, something about Egyptians and Egypt specifically came through related to um, related to little Loki. Also superhero, a little superhero. Did he do something really special? Did he do something that was heroic? Um, something for which you really praised him, um, helped out in some way. He helped in some way um, that I, that I didn't get. I just got that sense that he was, that he helped. Um, I also see, I visualized him. Uh, on a long path, um, maybe a gravel path, and he's running it at his fastest speed. He was a very fast runner, and he's running as fast as he can possibly run, and he's so happy, and I got a sense of sun, and then sometimes this comes through in little bits of poetry. Sun, breeze, freeze, trees, um, freedom, uh, that he was very good at, at walking on his tiptoes. Um, I saw tall grass, um, tall grass with this red soft red tuft at the top little little tiny red things at the top of it i saw for a tall grass now for, of course for him from his perspective probably lots of grass was tall but I, I did sense like fairly tall grass with these little red tufts um and a little yellow flower i would call them buttercups i don't know what they're called um Lok, little loki happens to live in sweden we're going to talk about that in just a second um but I saw these little yellow flowers uh, with near the, the the tall grass with the with the red tufts. Um, so let's talk about that now before we talk about the message that comes through regarding his passing and and what comes through from the entire animal collective when we help our animals to cross to the other side. I did help Lucy and Jack cross to the other side. Winston crossed on his own, so I know exactly exactly the feeling. Um, and we'll talk about that in a minute. But I wanted to talk about the fact that this little doggy is from Sweden. And I, because I get this question a lot, I have worked with animals from Greece, France, Sweden, Mexico. So these were non-English speaking animals. So I speak the English language. 
These were non-English speaking animals. How do I get messages from them? Well, it's so easy. I don't know exactly how, so I can't, uh, like, I can't give you the, the out and out details. What I know from my experience is that we communicate with our hearts and we have something in our brain called a pineal gland. And that is my like connector. It's like my little cell phone and it's a pocket translator and it takes whatever information my heart and mind receive and it frames it in a way that I can understand it. And so sometimes when I work with animals who are from another country, I may get something wrong here or there. Um, in fact, I can, I, I hear this little song. It's a sing song that's not in English um, and I can't even say it. So I don't know what it is, but um, sometimes those kinds of things will come through. But for the most part, I do receive information in a way that is that I can understand and relay um, in these little readings. So let's talk about assisted crossing. When our animals transition, when they reach a stage in their life, when they have physical ailment, terminal illness, or they've um, become old, frail, uh, what do we do if we decide that we want to make the decision to help them cross? It can be gut-wrenching, and I speak from experience. I'm not sharing with you anything that I have not gone through myself. And you question, and for Lucy, so for example, I'm gonna share Lucy. Lucy went into a coma um, in March of the year that she crossed. It's been several years now. Lucy went into a coma, and that weekend while she was in the coma, she was not present with us. Her body was functioning, she was not there. Um, we were going to, we'd been in touch with the veterinarian. It was over a weekend. I knew that on Monday, if she was still in the coma, that I would take to assist. Um, I, I did not want to see her just um, wasting away. That was not the life I wanted for her. Now, come Monday morning, um, we, we did a lot of Reiki with her. I had people from all around the world sharing Reiki with her. On Monday morning, she rebounded. She rebounded in such a way that if I had thought to make the decision on Sunday, I might have regretted it had I known what would happen on Monday. But we can't, there is nothing we can do to shift what happened or we cannot, and we cannot predict what will happen. We can only deal with what we have right now and we do the best we can with what we have at this moment in time, always understanding that the decisions we make are in their best interest. We would knew, we always work for their highest good. And I don't think there's anybody who's ever watched this channel who would not do anything that wasn't in their animal's highest good. Um, so we make this decision from a place in our heart. Anyway, so for Lucy, she um, she, can't, she had a rebound and she actually stayed with us for another two or three months. But during that time, she eventually again experienced a decline. And one day when she lost control of her bodily functions, she gave me a look, a look that just said, it's time. And I've shared this story before, um, a look that said it's time. And I knew. And so in that moment, I did not feel guilt. Um, I was grateful that we'd had a little bit of extra time with her, but I did not feel guilt when the final moment came because I knew I was helping her. I was helping her to have an easy, calm peaceful transition. And I think that is what we need to focus on. Uh, the question that came up from little Loki's mama was, did I, did I end his life prematurely? Um, was it my right to make that decision? And I would say again, that you did the absolute best you could for him in that moment, easing his transition. That's really what I want to focus on. So I made myself some notes here as I go out and, and speak with the animals and I ask them to give me insight about their feeling, they tell me a couple of things. Number one, they don't hold a grudge. So no matter what the situation was, they don't take it with them when they cross to the other side. They immediately cross into pure positive love. That's a topic for another video um, about the fact that they don't get stuck between worlds. Maybe I'll do a little short video on that, um, that they, they are such pure love, they transition immediately. So our goal would be to ease their pain while in their physical body. And if their physical body has, has come to its time, if it's done everything it's meant to do, if they've lived their beautiful little life as best they possibly can, um, it's okay to make that decision without guilt or remorse or regret. Uh, it's okay because they don't leave us. They don't leave us. It's why I do videos about asking for signs about going to sleep and having a dream about them. 
Um, we are still here in our physical bodies and we feel the pain in our physical heart and, and we have the emotions for them and we miss them, but they are right here with us just in a different form. I haven't used this analogy in a while, the water, ice, steam analogy. Their energy does not die. Their soul does not die. It's simply on a beautiful cycle. It is in a beautiful, natural cycle. Of, and this is just a transition. It's the best word I know of, just a transition. As when ice melts and becomes water, and when water is boiled and it becomes steam, and the steam rises off into the air, that is a beautiful transition. And that is all your beautiful animal companion is experiencing. And you can be with them. They can be with you every step of the way. Um, it's why I say it, ask for signs when you're in that sweet spot right between awake and asleep is the easiest way for them to get to connect with you. Think about them, look for things, smell things, hear things. Um, Jack is the other one. I tell the story that I was between awake and asleep in the early morning and I had asked for a sign and I could hear him drinking out of the toilet and, and, and I would, he, he drank out of the toilet. I would hear that drinking out of the toilet and be like, Jack, stop drinking out of the Jack, Jack. Like all of a sudden I recognized because he wasn't physically with me, but he was spiritually and energetically with me. And he was showing me in one of the best ways they know how, which is through our senses. And in that dream, half, half awake, half dream sleep state, when they know that they can kind of break through a little bit without our, without our crazy little monkey minds um, keeping them away. Okay, so let's see, is there anything else I wanna share? Um, I will hope that um, Loke or little Loki's mama will let me know. It's L-O-K-E. Will let me know if any of this makes sense. Um, whether it was playing with the feather, the cat named Toby. Uh, that's weird. The cat named Toby that that just popped out of my mouth. Um, very interesting about his past life. And know that he is fine. Know that you are fine. Know that you have not committed some mortal sin. Uh, you have helped him in the best way possible, as we always do with our beautiful, beloved animal companions. All right, that is today's message. Have a beautiful morning, afternoon, evening, wherever you are in the world. May animals light your way. Take care.